Darlie Rodier, Artificial Intelligence Analysis. On June 6, 1996, in Rollett, Texas, a tragic incident occurred at the Routier family home. Darlie Routier, her husband Darren, and their three young children were attacked. Darlie claimed that an intruder had broken into their house, attacked her and her children, and that she fought back in self-defense. Tragically, two of her sons, Damon, five years old, and Devin, six years old, succumbed to their injuries and passed away. During the investigation, several pieces of evidence were presented that raised suspicion against Darley. The prosecution argued that Darley staged the crime scene and inflicted injuries on herself to create the appearance of an intruder. They highlighted inconsistencies in her statements, such as her changing accounts of the events and the absence of signs of forced entry, despite her claims. One significant piece of evidence was the presence of bloodstains, both Darley's and her children's, throughout the house. Additionally, a sock containing her son Damon's blood was discovered in an alley behind the home. Prosecutors argued that this sock was a crucial element in tying Darley to the crime. Furthermore, the prosecution suggested financial motives for the crime, claiming that Darley and her husband were facing financial difficulties and that life insurance policies were in place for the children. In 1997, Darlie Routier was convicted of capital murder and sentenced to death. She has remained on death row since her conviction, and her case has attracted significant attention and debate. Supporters argue that there were inconsistencies and flaws in the investigation and trial, pointing to potential alternate suspects or intruders. The Darlie Routier case remains a complex and controversial one, with ongoing efforts by supporters seeking a reevaluation of the evidence and a reconsideration of her conviction. It continues to generate discussions and debates regarding the accuracy of the trial and the potential involvement of others in the crime. The Neck Wound The nature of Darlie Routier's neck wound has been a topic of discussion in the case. Different perspectives have been presented regarding whether the wound was self-inflicted or not. Points for the neck wound being self-inflicted. It's important to recognize that these points reflect arguments made by various parties involved in the case. The determination of whether the neck wound was self-inflicted or inflicted by an external attacker rests on the evaluation of evidence and expert testimony provided during the trial. Points for the neck wound being self-inflicted 1. Absence of defensive wounds. Critics argue that the lack of defensive wounds on Darley's arms or hands suggests the possibility of self-infliction, as one would expect such wounds when fighting off an attacker. 2. Alleged inconsistencies in the crime scene. Some argue that certain aspects of the crime scene, such as the absence of forced entry and the neat arrangement of items, raise questions about the presence of an intruder and could support the idea of self-infliction. 3. Access to the murder weapon. Darley had access to the knife used in the attack as it belonged to her household. This proximity to the weapon raises the possibility that she could have inflicted the neck wound herself. 4. Prior self-inflicted wounds. It has been noted that Darley had a history of self-inflicted wounds and mental health struggles, which some argue could indicate a propensity for self-harm. 5. Inconsistencies in Darley's statements. Critics point to alleged inconsistencies in Darley's accounts of the events surrounding the attack, suggesting that she may have fabricated or altered information to support her defense Points against the neck wound being self-inflicted. 1. Expert testimony. During the trial, medical experts testified that the location, depth, and characteristics of the neck wound were inconsistent with self-infliction and indicated an external attack. 2. Immediate medical response. Emergency responders and medical professionals who treated Darley noted the neck wound upon arrival. This suggests that the injury was not self-inflicted, but required immediate medical attention. 3. Absence of hesitation wounds. 
Critics argue that self-inflicted wounds often exhibit hesitation marks or multiple attempts, whereas the neck wound in Darley's case was described as a single, clean cut, inconsistent with typical self-inflicted injuries. 4. Lack of motive for self-infliction. Supporters argue that Darley had no apparent motive to harm herself, especially considering the severity of the injuries she sustained and the tragic loss of her children. 5. Absence of prior self-harm incidents. While there have been suggestions of prior self-inflicted wounds, there is limited concrete evidence to substantiate a pattern of self-harm or self-infliction in Darley's history. These points highlight the arguments put forth by different perspectives in the case. However, it is important to note that the determination of whether the neck wound was self-inflicted or inflicted by an external attacker ultimately rests on the evaluation of evidence and expert testimony presented during the trial. Analysis of wound being self-inflicted, 45% chance. The Sock in the Alley the sock found in the alley behind the Routier residence is an important piece of evidence in the Darley Routier case. The sock contained the blood of her son, Damon, who was one of the victims of the attack. Its discovery raised questions and became a significant factor in the prosecution's case against Darley. The prosecution argued that the sock was placed there by Darley herself in an attempt to create the appearance of an intruder. They contended that the presence of Damon's blood on the sock indicated Darley's involvement in staging the crime scene. However, supporters of Darley Routier argue that the sock's location in the alley suggests the possibility of an intruder discarding it while fleeing the scene. They point out that the sock was found several days after the crime, raising concerns about potential contamination and tampering of evidence. The sock's significance is tied to the debate surrounding the staging of the crime scene. The prosecution argued that Darley, in an effort to cast blame on an intruder, placed the sock in the alley to create the impression that an outside attacker was responsible for the crimes. On the other hand, Darley's supporters questioned the prosecution's theory, suggesting alternative explanations for the presence of the sock. Ultimately, the interpretation of the sock's significance rests on the analysis of the evidence and the arguments presented during the trial. The prosecution contends that it supports their case against Darlie, while her supporters argue that it raises doubts about her guilt. Points for the sock being placed by Darlie. 1. Proximity to the crime scene. Critics argue that the Sock's location in the alley behind the Rutia residence suggests it could have been easily accessed and placed there by Darley, potentially as part of a staged crime scene. 2. Absence of dirt or debris. Some argue that the Sock appeared relatively clean and lacked significant dirt or debris which they claim is inconsistent with it being discarded and left in an alley. This could suggest it was placed there intentionally. 3. Presence of Damon's blood. The fact that the sock contained Damon's blood raised questions about how it ended up in the alley. Critics argue that this suggests Darley's involvement in moving the sock to the alley to support her claim of an intruder. 4. Timing of the sock's discovery. Critics raise concerns about the fact that the sock was found several days after the crime, potentially allowing for contamination or tampering of the evidence, which they argue could cast doubt on its authenticity. 5. Prosecution's argument. The prosecution contended that the sock was part of Darley's attempt to stage the crime scene and create the appearance of an intruder pointing to her proximity to the sock, her knowledge of its presence, and the blood evidence as supporting their argument points against the sock being placed by Darley. 1. Intruder involvement. Supporters argue that the sock's location in the alley suggests the possibility of an intruder discarding it while fleeing the scene, indicating that it was not placed by Darley. 2. Questions about contamination. 
Supporters raise concerns about potential contamination or tampering of the evidence, highlighting the delay in the SOC's discovery and the subsequent handling, which they argue could cast doubt on its validity as evidence against Darley. 3. Lack of direct evidence Critics contend that there is no direct evidence linking Darley to the placement of the sock, and its discovery alone is not sufficient to establish her guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. 4. Alternate Explanations Supporters propose alternate explanations for the sock's presence, such as the possibility of an intruder discarding it or it being moved accidentally or unknowingly by other individuals involved in the investigation. 5. Lack of conclusive proof. Critics argue that the sock, while significant, is just one piece of evidence among many in the case. They emphasize that its interpretation should be considered in conjunction with the overall evidence and the context of the crime. Analysis of the probability the sock was placed in the alley by Darley. 20% chance. The Silly String Video. The Silly String video is a piece of evidence in the Darley Routier case that has been subject to scrutiny and interpretation. The video, taken by Darley's husband, Darren, just days after the attack, shows the family celebrating a child's birthday. In the video, Darley can be seen playfully spraying Silly String around the living room. Supporters of Darley argue that the video demonstrates her alleged emotional state following the tragedy. They claim that her behavior appears inconsistent with someone who had just lost two children and had been through a traumatic event. They argue that it shows her lack of emotional distress, suggesting that she may not have been involved in the crime. On the other hand, critics of Darley highlight that the video does not provide definitive evidence of her guilt or innocence. They contend that people react differently to trauma and grief, and emotional responses can vary widely. They argue that Darley's behavior in the video should not be used as a sole basis for judging her involvement in the crime. Additionally, critics question the timing and relevance of the video. They argue that it captures a moment in time that is distinct from the immediate aftermath of the crime. They highlight the importance of considering the entire context of the case and the events leading up to and following the attack. It's important to note that the interpretation of the silly string video is subjective and open to different perspectives. The video alone does not provide conclusive evidence regarding Darley's guilt or innocence. The legal process and the overall body of evidence presented during the trial should be taken into account when forming an understanding of the case. Suspicious Cars in the Neighborhood The presence of suspicious cars in the neighborhood is an important aspect of the Darley Routier case. Several neighbors reported observing unfamiliar or suspicious vehicles in the vicinity around the time of the crime. These reports raised questions about the potential involvement of unknown individuals in the events that unfolded. According to witness accounts, neighbors noticed vehicles parked or driving in the area, which they considered out of the ordinary or suspicious. Some witnesses mentioned seeing a dark-colored or maroon vehicle parked on the street or in the vicinity of the Routier residence. Others reported seeing a green or teal vehicle driving at high speeds in the neighborhood. These reports of suspicious cars led to speculations that an unknown intruder or intruders could have been involved in the crime. Supporters of Darley Rowdier argue that the presence of these vehicles supports her claims of an intruder being responsible for the attack on her and her children. However, critics argue that these reports of suspicious cars may not necessarily be linked to the crime itself. They contend that the presence of unfamiliar vehicles could be coincidental or unrelated to the events that occurred at the Rodia residence. They suggest that the focus should be on other aspects of the case, such as the physical evidence and the circumstances surrounding the crime scene. It is important to note that while witness accounts of suspicious vehicles add another layer of complexity to the case, their significance and connection to the crime remain subject to interpretation. 
the investigation and legal proceedings would require a thorough examination of these witness testimonies, including cross-referencing them with other evidence and considering any potential leads they might provide. Analysis of the probability one of these vehicles could be connected to the crime, 40%. Alternate theories. In the Darley Routier case, while Darley herself was the primary suspect and subsequently convicted, there have been alternative theories and suggestions put forth by various parties. Here are 10 individuals who have been mentioned as potential alternate suspects, but please note that these are speculative and have not been substantiated through official investigations or legal processes. 1. Unknown intruder. One theory suggests the involvement of an unknown intruder or intruders who entered the Routier residence on the night of the crime points for 1. Presence of unknown fingerprints or DNA evidence at the crime scene that does not match any known individuals in the household. 2. Reports of suspicious individuals or vehicles in the neighborhood around the time of the crime. 3. Lack of clear motive for Darley to stage the crime and harm her own children. 4. Possibility that an intruder could have gained access to the residence without detection. 5. Uncertain origin of the knife used in the attack, potentially suggesting involvement of an unknown assailant. Points against. 1. Absence of signs of forced entry or evidence of an intruder in the home. 2. Darley's inconsistent statements and actions following the crime. 3. Lack of concrete evidence directly implicating an unknown intruder. 4. Proximity of the victims to Darley during the attack, raising questions about the ability of an intruder to carry out the crime without confrontation. 5. Failure to identify or apprehend any potential suspects fitting the description of an intruder. 2. Darley's estranged husband, Darren Rotier. Some have speculated about the potential involvement of Darley's estranged husband, Darren, citing factors such as financial motives and inconsistencies in his statements. Points 4. 1. Potential financial motives, including life insurance policies and financial strain within the family. 2. Inconsistencies in Darren's statements and actions. 3. Access to the residence and familiarity with the family's routine. 4. Possible involvement in staging the crime scene to divert suspicion. 5. Darren's presence at the crime scene during the attack raises questions about his potential involvement. Points against. 1. Lack of concrete evidence directly implicating Darren in the crime. 2. Alibi and testimony of Darren's whereabouts during the attack. 3. No prior history of violence or criminal behavior. 4. Absence of financial gain following the crime. 5. Darley's consistent claims of Darren's innocence and lack of involvement. 3. Intruders targeting the wrong house. It has been proposed that the attack may have been a case of mistaken identity, with intruders targeting the wrong residents. Points for intruders targeting the wrong house. 1. Lack of a clear motive. If the crime was a case of mistaken identity, intruders may have targeted the wrong house due to similarities or confusion, resulting in the attack on Darley and her family. 2. Reports of unfamiliar vehicles or suspicious individuals in the neighborhood. Witness accounts of unknown cars or individuals present in the area may support the theory that intruders mistakenly believed they were targeting a different residence. 3. Absence of personal connections or conflicts with Darley or her family. If the victims were not specifically targeted, it suggests that the attackers had no personal motive for harming them. 4. Randomness of the attack. If the perpetrators had intended to target someone else, the seemingly random nature of the crime may align with the theory of intruders targeting the wrong house. 5. Errors or inconsistencies in the crime planning or execution.
Mistakes made during the crime, such as selecting the wrong residence or misidentifying the victims, could suggest that intruders mistakenly targeted Darley's home. Points against intruders targeting the wrong house. 1. Proximity to the crime scene. The attackers would have needed to approach the correct house, which raises questions about how they could have mistaken the target if Darley's residence was their intended destination. 2. Complexity of the attack. The severity and extent of the violence inflicted on Darley and her children suggest a planned and deliberate act, making it less likely that intruders simply targeted the wrong house by chance. 3. Knowledge of the victims. The assailants appeared to have information about the family's routines and vulnerabilities, indicating some level of familiarity with their target. 4. Lack of evidence or leads pointing to a mistaken target. No concrete evidence, such as statements from the attackers themselves or other corroborating sources, supports the theory of intruders mistakenly targeting the wrong house. 5. Focus on Darley as the primary suspect. The investigation and legal proceedings primarily centered around Darley's involvement, with her consistent claim of an unknown intruder being questioned by authorities. 4. A hired hitman. This theory suggests that someone hired a hitman to carry out the attack, possibly motivated by personal or financial reasons. Points 4. 1. Possibility of someone with a motive to harm Darley or her family hiring a hitman to carry out the attack. 2. Financial motives or disputes that could prompt someone to seek out a hitman's services. 3. Lack of personal connection between the hitman and the victims, making it challenging to establish a clear motive. 4. Complexities and severity of the attack potentially indicating a professional or planned hit. 5. Potential involvement of multiple individuals in coordinating the crime, including the hiring of a hitman. Points against. 1. Absence of concrete evidence linking the crime to a hired hitman. 2. Lack of a clear motive or evidence of financial gain following the crime. 3. Focus on Darley as the primary suspect and her own account of an intruder. 4. No indications of a professional hit or a known hitman being involved. 5. The complexity of orchestrating a hired hit and keeping it concealed without any substantial evidence or leads pointing in that direction. 5. Darley's former acquaintances. Some have speculated about the involvement of individuals from Darley's past who may have held grudges or harbored ill intentions towards her. Points for 1. Potential motives stemming from past conflicts, disputes, or strained relationships. 2. Knowledge of Darley's vulnerabilities and personal history that could be exploited. 3. Possible access to personal information or familiarity with the family's routine. 4. Lack of personal connection between the suspects and the victims, making it difficult to establish a clear motive. 5. Potential involvement of multiple individuals collaborating to carry out the crime. Points against. 1. Absence of concrete evidence directly implicating Darley's former acquaintances in the crime. 2. No known disputes or conflicts that would specifically link these individuals to the attack. 3. Focus on Darley as the primary suspect and her consistent claim of an intruder. 4. Lack of substantial leads or evidence pointing to the involvement of specific former acquaintances. 5. The complexity of orchestrating such a crime and keeping it concealed without any substantial evidence or leads pointing in that direction. 6. Serial killer or transient. This theory suggests the possibility of a random encounter with a transient or serial killer who happened to be in the area. Points 4. 1. Similar unsolved cases or patterns of attacks in the area that could indicate the presence of a serial killer or transient. 2. Possibility of a random encounter with an individual passing through the area. 3. M.O. 
Modus operandi, similarities to other unsolved crimes, suggesting the involvement of a serial offender. 4. Lack of personal connection or motive between the suspect and Darley or her family. 5. Difficulty in identifying transient individuals, making it challenging to establish their presence or involvement definitively. Points against. 1. Lack of a clear pattern or connection to other known serial killer cases in the area. 2. No evidence linking the crime to other unsolved cases or indicating the involvement of a transient. 3. Focus on the immediate vicinity and absence of reports of similar attacks in neighboring areas. 4. Presence of personal items and valuables left untouched, potentially inconsistent with the behavior of a transient or serial killer. 5. Darley's consistent claim of an intruder which conflicts with the profile of a serial killer targeting specific victims. 7. A neighbor or someone familiar with the area. Some propose that the perpetrator could have been someone familiar with the neighborhood or a neighbor who had knowledge of the family's routine. Points 4. 1. Knowledge of the family's routine and vulnerabilities due to proximity and familiarity with the neighborhood. 2. Ease of access to the residents and potential opportunity to observe the family's habits. 3. Potential motive stemming from personal disputes or conflicts. 4. Witnesses reporting unfamiliar or suspicious vehicles or individuals in the vicinity at the time of the crime. 5. Possibility of the suspect blending in with the local community, making identification and apprehension challenging. Points against. 1. Lack of concrete evidence directly linking a neighbor or someone familiar with the area to the crime. 2. No prior history of conflicts or disputes between the Rodier family and their neighbors. 3. Absence of reports or evidence indicating a neighbor's involvement. 4. Darley's consistent claims of an unknown intruder rather than a familiar face from the neighborhood. 5. Failure to identify or apprehend any specific neighbors or individuals fitting the description of a potential suspect. 8. Another family member. There have been suggestions that another family member, such as a relative or a close associate, could have been involved. Points 4. 1. Access to the residence and familiarity with the family's routines, making it easier to carry out the crime. 2. Potential motives stemming from personal conflicts, disputes, or strained relationships within the family. 3. Possibility of involvement in staging crime scene or manipulating the evidence. 4. Knowledge of personal vulnerabilities and family dynamics that could be exploited. 5. Potential involvement of multiple individuals collaborating to carry out the crime. Points against. 1. Lack of concrete evidence directly implicating another family member in the crime. 2. No prior history or documented incidents indicating violent tendencies or criminal behavior within the family. 3. Focus on Darley as the primary suspect and her consistent claim of an unknown intruder. 4. No clear motive or history of significant conflicts or disputes within the family that would specifically point to the involvement of another family member. 5. The complexity of orchestrating such a crime and keeping it concealed without any substantial evidence or leads pointing in that direction. 9. Stalker or obsessed individual. This theory suggests the possibility of a stalker or someone with an unhealthy fixation on Darley or the family. Points 4. 1. Possibility of a stalker or someone with an unhealthy fixation on Darley or her family. 2. History of unwanted attention or harassment from an individual known to Darley or the family. 3. Potential motive driven by obsession, jealousy, or resentment. 4. Knowledge of personal details, routines, and vulnerabilities that could be exploited in the crime. 5. Possibility of a pattern of stalking behavior or previous incidents indicating an individual's fixation on Darley. Points against 1. 
lack of concrete evidence linking the crime to a specific stalker or obsessed individual. 2. Absence of documented incidents or reports of harassment or stalking directed towards Darley or the family. 3. Focus on Darley as the primary suspect and her consistent claim of an unknown intruder. 4. No clear motive or history of personal animosity with an individual that would point to a stalker or obsessed individual's involvement. 5. The complexity of orchestrating such a crime and keeping it concealed without any substantial evidence or leads pointing in that direction. 10. Mistaken revenge or revenge gone wrong. Some propose that the crime may have been an act of revenge intended for someone else, but due to mistaken identity or a botched plan, Darley and her children became unintended victims. Points 4. 1. Possibility of mistaken identity if the perpetrator intended to target someone else in the neighborhood. 2. Motives for revenge against someone associated with the neighborhood or community. 3. Presence of conflicting or unsettled disputes within the neighborhood that could lead to mistaken revenge. 4. Reports of suspicious vehicles or unfamiliar individuals in the vicinity suggesting a potential connection to a mistaken target. 5. Difficulty in identifying the intended target if the crime was a result of mistaken revenge. Points against. 1. Lack of concrete evidence or leads supporting the theory of mistaken revenge. 2. No specific conflicts or disputes involving the Routier family that would point to being targeted for revenge. 3. Absence of any known enemies or individuals with a motive for revenge against the family. 4. The nature and severity of the attack on Darley and her children suggesting a more personal motive rather than a case of mistaken revenge. 5. Darley's consistent claims of an intruder rather than a case of mistaken identity or revenge. Analysis of probability for each of these theories. Unknown intruder, 30%. Darren Raudier, Darley's estranged husband, 20%. Serial killer or transient, 15%. A hired hitman, 10%. Darley's former acquaintances, 10%. Neighbor or someone familiar with the area, 10%. Mistaken revenge or revenge gone wrong, 10%. Stalker or obsessed individual, 10%. Another family member, 5%. Intruders targeting the wrong house, 10%. Darren Rodier. There have been speculations and discussions regarding Darren's potential knowledge or involvement in the case. Supporters of Darley may argue that Darren has knowledge of what happened and potentially played a role in the crime. However, critics may argue that there is no concrete evidence directly implicating Darren in the crime and that he maintains his innocence. Analysis of Probability Regardless of extent of involvement, that Darren Raudier knows what happened, 40%.